見てはいけないよここに戻ってきたからには。Hello and welcome to the latest anime of 2024. In this story, a girl named Momochi walks through the forest. Her father passed away when she was a baby, and with no relatives to care for her, she grew up in an orphanage where everyone loved her dearly. Momochi never knew what her father looked like, and her only wish is to see him someday. Now, her father has left her a significant gift, a beautiful house. Momochi enters the house and, from the other side, witnesses a powerful explosion. After the dust settles, a boy with beautiful eyes appears, followed by two others. Momochi believes they are thieves, and they, in turn, think she is the culprit. Momochi informs them that she is the owner of the house, introducing herself as Momochi, and that this is her home. The boy with the blue eyes, Nanamori, reveals that they have decided to live in this house. They ask Momochi to leave, and also try to scare her by mentioning rumors about the place being haunted by demons and spirits. Yukari, the one with purple hair, claims to have heard that the house is inhabited by evil entities. Momochi recalls a flashback warning her not to go to the house, adding to her shock. Back in the present, Momochi screams at the trio, insisting that these things won't scare her. She demands them to leave immediately. Momochi then hands them a document left by her father as proof that the house belongs to her. Yukari realizes that the will seems suspicious and expresses his concern. Momochi, angered by their doubts, says that this document is her father's legacy, but she won't leave the house. Enraged, Izuki approaches her, wanting to strike her. Momochi suggests that she can stay overnight and leave the next day. Despite Yukari's skepticism, Nanamori understands her feelings but warns her that staying here will bring her many problems. However, Momochi stands firm in her decision not to leave the house. In the middle of the night, while Hamari was asleep in her bed, she pondered where she would go, as she had nowhere else to go, and questioned who this person was supposed to inform her about staying in the house in the first place. After all, this is her home. Moments of silence passed, and she became frightened because the house was very dark and had a strange chill. There was no electricity in the house, and at this time, she heard a strange sound coming from somewhere in the room. She tried to reassure herself by thinking it was just a mouse, but then it seemed to her that she heard creepy laughter, intensifying her fear. She then remembered the warning she received when she was coming to this house. Some people had cautioned her not to enter this house because it was haunted, a dwelling place for demons not from this world. If she trespassed, she would pay the price from Omamori. Shaken, Hamari returned to her senses, attempting not to scare herself further, considering this talk to be just in her imagination. However, at that moment, she noticed a shadow of someone on the glass of the door, but it disappeared after a few moments. Hamari, trembling with fear, covered herself with a blanket so that no one could see her. She tried various ways to calm herself, but there was no use. She decided she would kick these boys out to reclaim her father's home. In the early morning, Hamari woke up, showing signs of exhaustion as she couldn't sleep well due to the night's events. She took a tour around the house to prove to those people that she is the legitimate owner. Since she woke up early, she decided to prepare a delicious breakfast, but she was surprised when she entered the kitchen and found a traditional stove in this modern era. She had to light it to start preparing breakfast. Yukari appeared at this time, asking her what she was doing in the kitchen so early. She informed him that she was trying to prepare breakfast, but he told her that breakfast had already been prepared and that her portion was there, so she should sit down to eat her meal. Hamari looked at the food, puzzled and unsure of what to make of this unexpected situation. She marveled at his beauty, unable to believe that Yukari was the one who prepared all of this. He explained that Ah insisted on preparing her portion as well. Hamari was overjoyed as it had been a very long time since someone had cooked for her. She thanked Yukari for what he did, expressing that she had never had such a luxurious breakfast before. Yukari, responsible for the kitchen in the house, considered the food's quality to be on par with other exquisite dishes. Hamari continued to eat the delicious meal, and Yukari asked if she wanted another dish. Hamari agreed giving him her plate so he could serve her more food. After finishing her meal, Hamari decided to clean up. 
She was known as the cleaning queen in the orphanage, and she wanted this place to shine. As she entered the room, she found it extremely messy, wondering what had happened to make it this way. Izuki appeared before her. He slept in this room. When he saw her, he became annoyed because she was still in the house. He left without saying anything. Aoi approached her and questioned why she was cleaning so early. Hamari explained that this was her home, so it was natural for her to want to clean it. Aoi didn't respond, and Hamari looked at the room, unsure of how to clean it without a vacuum cleaner. She glanced at her phone, realizing there was no service. Aoi, unfamiliar with the device, burned it when she asked about it, causing Hamari great fear. Aizuki and Yukari rushed in to see what happened, thinking she had done something to him. Hamari explained that Aoi was the one who harmed her, burning her phone. Aoi and his friends left the house, and Hamari began cleaning. The house was indeed strange, as no matter how many rooms she entered, new ones appeared. Now, Hamari was left to clean the mysterious house on her own. Hamari exclaimed that no matter which room she entered, another one appeared. She wondered about what she had witnessed last night. Suddenly, a black drop fell on her, and she looked up to find many ghosts. Hamari screamed, telling them to leave, but the ghosts insisted she should depart. Unfazed, Hamari shouted that whether they were ghosts or not, the house did not belong to them. Despite her protests, the ghosts seemed to be a creation of Izuki, intended to scare her away from the house. Aoi, Yukari, and Izuki rushed to her when they heard her scream. Aoi questioned what was happening, and they found Izuki. Aoi scolded them for their actions and bound them. He asked about the commotion, and Izuki confessed to being the cause, mentioning that he also sealed it. Aoi scolded him saying he knew Izuki could easily stir up younger Yukai. He then explained to Hamari that the blood on her animals wasn't animal blood but Ayakashi, a substance containing Yukai and various other supernatural beings that aren't human. Hamari was surprised to hear that, and Aoi clarified that Momochi's house belonged to her as well. Yukari and Izuki were her friends, and although Aoi was human, their relationship was like a family. Yukari confirmed Aoi's human status, and Izuki didn't mind what they were. He considered them friends to Aoi. Aoi then asked Izuki to apologize to Hamari, and when he hesitated, Aoi insisted that when you do something wrong, you must apologize. Hamari was happy to see that they trusted each other and observed their relationship as smooth, resembling that of a family. Aoi told Hamari that while Yukari and Izuki were dear to him, she did not belong there. She apologized to them and left, thinking for a moment that she could join them, but realizing that, despite the house being hers, it was not where she truly belonged. Suddenly, the environment changed, and a giant monster appeared before Hamari, claiming to smell Momochi's blood. Aoi and his friends rushed to her aid, and the monster stated that its return had been beneficial. Terrified, Hamari couldn't breathe and fainted, but Aoi managed to save her. The story unfolds with these supernatural elements, exploring the connections between the characters and the mysterious occurrences in Momochi's house. At that moment, Hamari woke up, and Aoi informed her that he had inhaled all that poison. The monstrous creature declared Hamari as its prey, warning them not to interfere. As it attacked Aoi, Hamari quickly warned him. Suddenly, Aoi called out to her, and a powerful force with a flame-like aura emerged from him. Hamari remembered seeing this form when she spotted him outside the window. Aoi told the monster that after revealing itself again, he wouldn't let it escape easily. The monster was terrified and feared Aoi's newfound strength. Aoi then commanded his two servants to capture the Yukai, and they successfully evaded its consecutive attacks, restraining it with powerful bonds. The monster begged Aoi to spare its life, but Aoi, unyielding, told it that its wretched life wasn't worth pleading for. With a powerful strike, Aoi eliminated the monster in an instant, dispelling the gloom that had surrounded the place since the creature's arrival. Hamari believed Aoi to be an Ayakashi, but one of Aoi's assistants corrected her, revealing him to be Omomori-sama, the one who built Momochi's house at the boundary between the human and spirit worlds. Omomori-sama was the true ruler of Momochi, and Aoi was his servant. Hamari was astonished to learn that Aoi was Omomori-sama. 
The assistant explained that Omomori Sama protected Momochi's house, and Aoi was its true ruler. Hamari was surprised and wondered about Omomori Sama's identity. The assistant clarified that Omomori Sama was none other than Aoi Sama. Suddenly, Hamari lost consciousness and collapsed. A worried Aoi carried her back to the house, questioning how this could happen. He realized that, at the very least, he should have protected her. Aoi expressed concern and admitted that if he couldn't save Hamari, what had he been living for until now? In despair, Aoi believed that Hamari had died. In the morning, Aoi suddenly wakes up and can't find Hamari. He becomes extremely worried about her. To his relief, he discovers her standing right outside the house. He asks about her current condition, and she assures him that she is now in excellent health and feeling much better. Aoi is overjoyed to hear that she has recovered and is in good spirits. He then tells her that she must have understood by now that Momochi House is not just a residence for good Ayakashi but also a place where Ayakashi like Komonendo exist. Hamari expresses her gratitude for this revelation, thanking Aoi for informing her about the need to leave. She acknowledges that she knows now that Momochi House is not just a haven for benevolent Ayakashi but also a link to her family. Even though she can't remember the faces or voices of her parents, she believes that by staying at Momochi House, she might eventually recognize them. Hamari's intelligence surprises Aoi's assistants when she tells them that she doesn't intend to leave Momochi House. She explains that this place is still the only connection to her family. One of Aoi's assistants, attempting to frighten her further, mentions the many creatures seeking the blood of Momochi, similar to her blood. Hamari, undeterred, states that dwelling on negativity won't benefit her. Momochi House is her home, and that's the end of it. She looks forward to living with Aoi and expresses her determination. Aoi is overjoyed by Hamari's resilience despite the frightening circumstances. Hamari's decision to stay, despite the potential dangers, brings a happy ending to the first episode of this wonderful anime. The viewers are encouraged to subscribe to the channel and activate the notification bell for updates on the next episode.